Um, I was, well, first, I'm uh, Nancy Anna King. I'm the head of institutional records and archives at the Getty Research Institute. Um, and I've been on the archive space training team since about 2014 or thereabouts. Anyway, something like that. Um, so today, I was specifically asked to demonstrate the archive space calculator. Um, and I'm not sure what level everybody is in the room, whether they've done that. In the interest of actually showing some of this more complex information, I'm not going to cover how to actually create a top container or how to actually create a location. I'm going to focus on the actual space calculator itself um, and then how you might batch adds information to existing top containers or locations. Some people might already have that built out and they want to extend that functionality. I know that Malaka Kotman this afternoon has this 20 person uh, workshop in which she is, I think, going to cover some of those lower level features. But if you're not attending that, you're welcome to grab me at lunch. I don't mind doing a working lunch and I can talk you through that if that's not something that you've ever done before. So uh, to get started, uh, any, I'll save some questions at the end because I think I'm going to take a certain amount of time. I wanted to kind of start with just an overall picture. Forgive me if I run around, I'm mic'd, so it should work unless I get out of space of the camera. So I'm going to stick over here because the camera's here. Um, so I have a little chart. And in order to make managing space work, you have to have a number of elements in the system built out. Now, you don't have, for a lot of functionality, you don't have to have them all. So for example, if you have a top container assigned to a location, you can locate things on your shelves. You can generate a shelf list and do some audit tracking of where your stuff is. And you could stop there and go no further. Um, you could, and, we, and there are places that do this, they have their top containers. They don't track locations, but they do want to have the system help ca calculate the extent of a collection. So they'll simply create container management and declare the container sizes, calculate the extent, and that's as far as they want to go with it. And you could stop there. You don't have to do locations. But if you actually want to track space, you have to have top containers assigned to locations, and the system has to be able to do math. And it can only do the math based on the numbers that you give it. So you have to take that top container and tell, them how, tell the system how big all of these top containers are. You also have to take these locations and tell it how big that location size is, because it's only when it has all of those elements that it's able to do the math to tell you where this box is going to fit on this particular shelf. Does that make sense? OK. So stop me. If you, really, if I'm losing people, do ask questions in the middle. It's, we don't have to leave them to the end. So that's the general landscape. And so what I'm going to show you first is if you have all of this build out, here's where the actual um, space calculator function lives. So I'll show you when it's built out, what it kind of does. So for example, one place you can find the, extent, the, the location calculator is, and these are some finding aids I popped into a little demo database, but they're kind of real. Uh, the locations are not real, but these are real. So I'm going to pull up a finding aid. And in this case, I've already assigned um, container profiles to this. But I'm going to drill down and find a box in an instance. And I'm going to go to the actual top container record. And if I edit that, at this point, I have a box. I've declared how big the box is. And I'll show you in a minute. We're going to come move a little bit backwards so it knows how big it is. I have some built out locations in the, already in the system that have some sizes assigned to them. And if I now want to find a location, for this box. Within the top container record, I can hit Add Location. And there's this Find with Space Calculator option that is available. This is the one of the two places in the system where this Find with Space Calculator exists. So if you look at this one, so for this particular box, I have some locations built out in the system. Very important university library. And I could search across the entire library. Um, I could narrow it down to a particular floor. Actually, it's going to be G1 or a room. And I can then hit check for space. And of that container size, for this particular container, these are all the places that I can put it. 
So I can assign this box specifically to this location, and then I'll just have to write it down and go put it in that spot. So if I do that, and link to location and save it, if I were to go back and, oops, find a different box, that's still box 10, I want a different one, let's do this. You'll see this is a somewhat slow process. And view and edit. If I do the same thing again, my mouse pad and I are not good friends, so I apologize for the extra time that's taking. And one, oh, I think it was G1. And 413, check for space. If you notice before, there are some, I already have some things in here, so if there's a location with no space available, it will tell me that. Uh, the unable to calculate, that it's small, but you can see this. Um, it might be that you have a location that doesn't have a size assigned to it, so it can't tell you whether or not you can fit something there. Um, and these are options with space available. Normally, I think it hasn't refreshed yet, but I did assign something, I believe, to that first column, and that size should change from seven to six. It hasn't yet, simply because I think the indexing hasn't, hasn't finished yet. I think we're in a different room. Were they in a different room? I think so. Oh, that could be it. Oh, you're right. Oh, this is a section, no locations with no space. There's no profile, so it can't calculate it. So it's telling you there's no space. There might be plenty of space, but the system doesn't know about it. So I think I was in the other room. I think it just hasn't, yeah, I think it just hasn't re-indexed yet. It can take a second. So this is the one place where you can find the space calculator. The other place you can find the space calculator is up here under system and under manage container profiles. And I'm going to leave that. So up here, I've made my container profiles, and this is my list of all of them. And let's say I have a Hollinger box or a record storage box, and I want to know where I can put it in my shelves. This is the other place where there's a space calculator. It's actually within the container profile record for each profile. So if I want to know where my cubic foot box can go, I hit that, theoretically. And again, I can do the same filtering. I could do it for the entire building. If I do it for the entire building, it's going to tell me I already have in one of my other finding aids five boxes of this type assigned somewhere. I have spaces available 281. That's my sort of hack for figuring out how much overall space I have. I can fit 200, and I have enough room left in my stacks for 281 cubic foot boxes. Or if you did it by Hollinger boxes, I have enough space in my stacks left for however many Hollinger boxes. Um, the system won't necessarily give you a summary other than this of how much available space there is. Now, if you notice, there's actually one here that says locations with no space available. It's not checked. If I were to check it, it will show me those spaces as well. And the places where it's telling me there are no, there is no space available, are actually the flat file drawers. And in this case, it's telling me in at least one dimension or another, you can't put this thing physically here. So also watch where it says no space available. Remember, that means for that specific size of container, not that that area doesn't have any space at all for anything. So pay attention that that means, again, that's just specific to that size of container. Does this make sense? OK. This is a sort of how to read the, your, your results here. And again, the unable to calculate. If there's no location profile, it can't tell you because it can't do the math. So let's say 
uh, you are in a position in which you may have top containers, you may have started assigning them to locations, but you actually at this point, even though you have data in the system, now want to move further and actually tracking where you can find some of this available space. So you're going to need to create this up here under system. These are where you're going to create your container profiles and your location profiles. When you do this, you're going to want, if you want to manage space successfully, you're going to have to track fairly finitely. It's better to try and track an individual box to an individual shelf. Um, I, at home, can't track space right now because I track boxes to a column. And so I actually tried to build out the system to say, let's try and fake it out so that the system thinks that my column is one big long shelf. Um, it's however many inches. Well, that doesn't work too well because sometimes at the end of each shelf, I've got this much empty space. Well, the system aggregates it. So it's telling me I have room for three Hollinger boxes. And in reality, I've got a couple inches on each shelf. So it doesn't really work. So the more finitely you can track it, the better. The other hint is going to be that, again, you're managing space. So if you're measuring your shelves and putting things in here to say, this is my shelf size, don't measure to the outside dimensions of the shelf. Only measure the internal, actual usable space. Doesn't matter if your shelf is 42 inches long, if you've got some brackets that are taking an inch off on either side. So measure the usable space. In the same way that if you're measuring your boxes, measure the widest part of the exterior. Some vendors will measure boxes with the interior dimensions. What you need, if I have a record storage box, it's one of those separable lids on top, that sticks out about a quarter inch on each size. Um, that can add up. So measure the exterior dimensions of boxes when you're doing your container profiles when possible, because that's going to give you better results over the long haul. The other trick is also trying to measure ranges of boxes. So if you have box one through three, you could say, well, it's 36 inches. Well, again, that's a nasty road to start going down because you're already going to have enough different container profiles for individual size boxes without trying to measure these aggregate ranges to figure out where they're going to fit. Um, so again, better individual box to location. And OK, I got a few more minutes. Um, so to actually create these, just another little tip or trick. Um, this is what it actually looks like to create a container profile. So you're going to want to name it something consistent. Let me back out a little bit. And you just want to be standard with how you do it in-house. In this case, I called it a Hollinger 5-inch letter or 5-inch legal. Put those in whatever order is going to work best for your repository so they can actually find them. Because your list of container types, especially if you have customized boxes and you really want to get finite about it, could be long. So you're going to want these, they sort in alphabetical order. And you can resort them. But so whatever's going to help your staff find these and apply them when need be. So watch your labeling. You don't necessarily want everyone on your staff to be able to create these. So you'll want to watch the permissions in association with them as well. Um, this shouldn't be a free-for-all area. And declaring the size of the location shelves should also not be a free-for-all area. So to actually create one, you type in your name, and it might be. I'm making this up. Uh, note the inch, the dimensions. Uh, and just as a note, if you end up using this to calculate extents, if everything is measured in inches, and I'll show you this in a second, your, your system will calculate the overall dimension of the, of the collection in inches. If you have mixed um, entries, so some of your dimensions are in feet, so some of your container profile types are measured in feet, some are in inches. When you calculate extent, I believe it automatically calculates everything as feet. Um, and I'll show you the difference a little bit, because if you want to track it in feet you're, and it calculates in inches, you're going to have to do the math and divide by 12 to get the number you want. Um, so a thing to know. The other thing to watch is this extent dimension. This is the one when it's calculating extent that it pays attention to. And in many cases, what you're probably going to want is width. How much width is it taking up on your shelf? Uh, there may be occasions where you want height. Uh, maybe with a flat file, maybe the most important thing is that it's a quarter inch thick or something like that, as opposed to a box. And the most important thing is that it's a foot on the shelf. So watch those. And this is where you would mention uh, your things. It doesn't like, I, I can do if it, uh, zero point. I'm making up numbers right now just to show you. Um, 
and I'm going to do feet. If I try to save this right now, it doesn't like more than two decimal places. So just watch that, and you'll have to round it to something. So it will be two, three. And if you, the URL could be used to point out to, say, a vendor. Um, from, or a vendor thing that, from whom you're purchasing this particular supply to help give it some um, other sorts of things. Other sorts of things. Sorry, that was not coherent. Um, some other detail. Uh, stacking limit. If you have small flat boxes that you're willing to stack on top of each other in particular shelves or flat files or something, and you're willing to have flat files stacked four or five high or six in a flat file drawer, uh, this is where you would say how many you can stack. So your shelf might allow, if these are flat boxes and they're you know, three or four inches tall, you might allow a stacking of three. And the system can incorporate this math to know that you still have room for another flat box in this particular area. Same thing with location profiles. It's very similar. I'm not actually going to build one out. Um, but you can measure it in inches or feet or centimeters, meters, whatever it is. Again, consistent naming uh, might be good. And depth, width, height, in this case, it's not asking you to specify which is the dominant. It just needs to know. And there are, again, a few in here. And this is what they look like. These top two uh, were built out to, say, indicate a specific slot on a shelf. That might work for some people, especially in some off-site storage facilities or with things where the computerized pulling is going on. Um, but for a lot of folks, they just want to measure to a shelf as opposed to a slot on a shelf. But you can get very finite with this if you have the time to go down that path. So now that we have some of these built, let's say we need to assign them to our, um, top, our existing top containers and our existing locations. So let's take some of these location profiles and attach them to existing locations. And I'm going to, here are some up here that don't have any. Now notice over here, there's not a checkbox for everything that comes back on your research screen. So you unfortunately have to check each one of them and I think this is limited to the amount that you can check at one time. I think it's limited to whatever comes back on your search screen. I don't think the check marks hold over if you go to the next page. Uh, so now that I have a bunch assigned, I can edit this batch. And I'm going to bulk update these records. And the fields that show up here are the fields that will be overwritten if you type data in. If you leave them blank, nothing will change. So in this case, I want to add a location profile. I can browse for one. I could create one from new from here, but again, I would not necessarily encourage doing that on the fly. Um, or I can type, and it might be, and you can just do the type ahead if I could type. Standard shelf and update locations. And over on the sidebar, though it went pretty quickly, you could see there was a list of like seven that were going to be updated. Um, this will take it a second to re-index, and then they will show up under that um, location profile once they index a little bit. And I might need to refresh this a few times. I'm not sure what the... They'll show up. I'm going to move on. <laughs> and so it, to update um, uh, container profiles is a little easier. Um, and there are different ways you can do that. This is the only way that I know of to update location profiles in existing locations. Ideally, if you haven't built out locations yet and you think you ever want to manage space, go ahead and build the lo just build out the shelf stuff and assign it at that point. Because once you have thousands of locations, this becomes tiresome. Um, but so if you can do that part up front, even if you end up not using it, it'll save you a lot of time later if you ever decide to use it. Uh, but that doesn't help you if you've already got the locations in there. So to update container profiles, the easiest way to do that in batch is to actually, if you've never used it, come over here to this little gear box and go to Manage Top Containers. 
And at this point, you can search for, I'm gonna just gonna bring up a um, entire resource. And this is all of the, this will bring up all of the boxes in that particular resource. And you notice in this case, they're not assigned to a location. Uh, they don't have a location, pro, a container profile. And so I can take, I could check everything. If I know everything is a certain size box, there is this click box up here at the top. Yeah, I could click that to highlight everything. But if I knew I had different size things, I could click on individual boxes. And I could, under bulk operations, update container profiles. If I hit this, I can again search and I can say this is a Hollinger and these are five inch legal and I can update all seven. When you come back, if, you, if you're not familiar with the screen, just note that the things that you checked stay highlighted. So before you make more changes, sometimes I'll just go in and click everything and unclick everything so I don't accidentally change that same set again. It's just something to be aware of. Um, and once all of this refreshes and indexes, which it's clearly going to take in a minute, I can, here's a flat file, and I could edit this. If I hit edit, this will take me into that unique top container record, and I could add a location profile there as well. So if I were to do that and simply edit that, there's a container profile option, um, and I can browse and here's a flat file, I'll link it, or I could do the type ahead. And I can save that. And notice this opened an extra window so I can just close it. And oops. I go back to manage top containers and There, these have at least refreshed. So now you can see some of these profiles have been assigned. At this point, I can then start going into some of these and assigning them to locations and using the space calculator. If you are in here, be aware that as an option, um, if you haven't built all this out and you're just tracking boxes and locations, I could select some of these and there are a couple of functions also up here under the bulk operations, update locations, single and multiple. The function of the, using the space calculator is not available through these. So if you use these options, you, there is no space calculator available. And the system isn't super tight with this. So I could assign all those boxes I just clicked to a single location. And the system isn't going to, when I use these two functions, the system does not do the math. It's not going to say there's space left there or not, because I think there was perhaps some assumption when all of this was built that not everybody would have everything built out completely for all of their spaces and all of their boxes, and they'd still need to assign it to a shelf someplace. So when you do these, all of those things that I clicked, I can still assign it to a single location. Um, but if I do this, the system will not check to see if anything else is already there. Uh, so you have to watch using this function, even though it's pretty neat, if you're actually trying to manage space. The other way to still use this update locations function is actually to go through your stacks, write down on a notepad, especially if you're filling in for the first time, boxes one through seven are on this shelf. Um, and so you know that the shelf is filled. You could then pick those seven boxes here, assign them to that location, especially if you're doing it for the first time. But again, just watch this functionality because it will overwrite any space stuff. It, it's a little loose. Um, so we are almost, we have, I'm sorry, one minute. <laughs> and I talked really fast and I apologize for that as well. Um, does anybody have any questions? Probably more than one, yeah. So what is some advice 
and we'll have to use the API. But any advice or things on doing that? Have you right. have you built out locations at all yet? Yes. Okay, so you have locations. Sadly, sadly, I don't know of an import that will, unless there's a plugin out there that I'm not aware of, and that is entirely possible. I don't know of an import that will load in bulk container profiles or bulk location profiles, let alone assign them to anything. Um, and of course, all of this data, this is another little warning for people who round trip finding aids. Whenever you round trip a finding aid, it's going to break all the locations. Because if you stop and think about it, the locations do not come out in EAD. That is not part of EAD, so it doesn't come out. So when you load them back in, it actually not only does the, the location data break, but it recreates all the top containers because there's not a match point. So when you round trip a finding aid, all of a sudden you have a whole new set of top containers. There is a way to easily go in and find the orphaned ones and get rid of them, but you will have to reassign those two locations. This is. If it's not an EAD, what's the system supposed to do? So um, that's how that works, but it's something to be aware of, that there will need to be constant maintenance of using locations in here. And so did that answer your question? I don't yeah. know of a bulk way to do it. Yeah. The best way I know to, to bulk stuff in is to actually do some of these, you know, bring up the collection, grab a bunch of boxes, yeah. and do the thing. Uh, the updating the profiles on the locations is more of a pain. Um, it's doable. <sighs> yeah. And if they're fairly standard, then it's it's doable. Um, your second question. I think that would, that's where I might decide that when I'm building my, my um, container profile, that I tell it that whatever, whatever dimension I want sticking out on the shelf is my width. That not, might not be the widest dimension. So if it's an oversized flat box and I want a certain edge of it sticking out because it's going to be the most efficient use. Yeah. That is, I mean, I, I suppose the only way you could truly do that would be to have two profiles, one specifying that the width is this in this case and the depth and I mean, so there's a way to do it, whether or not you want to go down, that could end up being a bit of a rabbit hole. Um, but it's certainly doable, it depends on how finite you want to get. Uh, but that would be the, because it, again it's that, um, it's that basically that, let me go back to it, the one that says this is the dimension that matters. And so that's what you would have to, if I pull this one up, it's this extent dimension. This is the one that it's going to use to calculate that. Um, so if it's the width or the depth, whichever dimension that is, and then you just have a second, and you, you'd have a second name, and that's how you could do it. Um, but yeah, think about long-term maintenance of some of these. So the other thing I promised to show and didn't, although we are horribly, and I don't want to take Lainey's time, but uh, the one thing I promised to do was to show, uh, I'm going to show quickly, wrong resources. So this is one that I have, construction records, I did that one. I assigned everything to it. And let's say I want the system to tell me how much, how big the collection is. So once I'm in the record, if I go to more over here, and hit the drop down, calculate extent. So if I hit this, it tells me this particular collection is 2,134 inches. If I tell it to create extent, it will add this extent to my record. But if I want to measure this in feet, I need to divide by 12. Um, so it's easier for the staff to read the records that are measured in inches, but it's easier if, if you want like the system to actually calculate linear feet or something like that for you, it's easier to enter some of those container profiles in feet. This is what it looks like when there's a mix. Um, I think I did that for humans, yeah. So in this case, more calculate extent so I have this particular dimension is I, I made in feet for this particular profile, and the rest are in inches. 
And in this case, it calculated everything in feet. Um, so be aware it does that. And then I can decide to add this to the thing. And I am way over time, and I'm going to get out of the way so that Lenny can set up for. Okay. <laughs> While she's getting water, any last questions? And again, I'm around the rest of the day. Um, uh, Malaka will cover some of this probably in her workshop. And uh, you're welcome to grab me at lunch if you have further questions. Just a quick one, I guess, before walking out. Yep. Um, I'm assuming somebody somewhere has already done the nice work of putting down sizes for standard things that we all use. Is there somewhere I can find those? I don't it? know, because even, because I'm at the Getty, and they have a long history, and they have Hollinger boxes that are like all kinds okay. of slight variants on that. So I think. I think part, it's partly measure, but also because you can have so many, you may want to have some defaults. It's like my standard Hollinger box, I'm, I'm going to say, worst case scenario, it's five and a half inches. Maybe it's only five. Um, maybe it's four and a half, something like that. But you can have so many that it's better to try and standardize them. All data like this is a little bit of a, it's like any statistic. It's a reflection of reality. So the question is, what do you, what can you maintain reasonably over time? That makes sense.